All right, let's talk about the underrated Baltimore Ravens defense, a defense that I feel like is debatably the best defense in football, and they don't have a ton of like Really, I think the issue is they don't have a big name pass rusher the way some of these other uh, defenses do, which isn't an issue in terms of how they're playing because their overall statistics are just as good as anyone else's. But just from a branding perspective, people don't uh, often give you, uh, you know, people pay more attention to the pass rushers than they do to the, uh, you know, to the def- defensive backs. Not to say that the pass rushers haven't been good either. Uh, just they don't have a, you know, a brand brand name recognition there. But let's talk about why this defense is playing so well. I want to start off with a play like this. So it's a blitz here. You know, Baltimore, they mix things up constantly. They like to do a lot of different things. And if you are going to blitz and you are going to, you know, surprise people like this, well, what do you have to do? You have to cover. And you see, I put the first down marker on the screen. It's going to be right at that 37 or 38 yard line. Well, watch how when this play begins, you're going to see Geno Smith takes the snap. And immediately, I mean, you see the three receivers for Seattle. Which one of them looks like they're open? The answer is none of them. And you have several you know, players for Baltimore who are still staying back in the coverage. So for Seattle, because they ha- have two players who are going to stay in blocking on this play, which again, part of why you're doing that is because you know Baltimore loves to blitz. You're having to take away eligible receivers, so you only have three, and Baltimore is doing a great job at covering these three receivers. So because of this, Geno Smith tries to scramble up in the pocket and instead ends up just getting sacked right there. This is what Baltimore does to you, is they don't give up anything through the air. This coverage unit is incredible. They're incredibly well coached. They you know dial up blitzes at the perfect time, and they just frustrate opposing quarterbacks, which is why we've seen great offenses struggle against them. Like heading over to this play, this is a good example where what's going to happen is it's going to be a man coverage play, uh, only single safety deep. A lot of teams don't even do this anymore, you know, for the kind of obvious logic of teams throw the ball so much down the field now, you want to protect yourself down the field, don't let guys, you know, be able to win one-on-one on the outside, like you're leaving yourself potentially open to right here. Brandon Stevens is the defender on this play. And watch how well Stevens is going to defend this route, where right when it begins, I mean, you see that Smith looks over in that direction. That's where he wants to throw, but it's just not open. And so Geno Smith says, all right, well, let's try and figure something else out. Again, Geno Smith does a good job at navigating the pocket, looks over to another player who isn't really open. There's maybe a little bit of separation with the scramble drill. Uh, Receiver is going to try to run over the middle. As he does, though, it's not a perfect throw, and Baltimore is able to take advantage, nearly really took advantage with a potential interception, but still take advantage enough and get the incompletion there. This is just what they force you to do. You have to get to your second read. You have to navigate the pocket. You have to make perfect throws. If you're not doing that, you know, you're not winning. Yes, maybe eventually something would have gotten open, but you can say that about every play in football, right? Uh, I think really good stuff by Baltimore. And like this play is another example too, where I feel like a lot of times when we talk about football, we talk good job offense and bad job offense. And to some degree, that's just like storytelling, right? Like it's easy, you know, each team has a quarterback that can kind of be viewed as the main character of the story for each team. And then did your quarterback play well or poorly? It's just an easier way to tell a story. But obviously, that's not reality. A lot of times the reason, you know, why a quarterback played poorly is because a defense played well. And there's sometimes when a quarterback plays poorly, and they did play poorly, but it's because of the difficulty that the defense was, you know, putting in front of them. Like what's going to happen on this play? On paper, pretty simple play. Zone coverage now, cover two zone. They're going to try to get the, you know, the out route on this play, the one that's going to be hopefully past a corner, but underneath the safety. You have another receiver running a deep route to push the, uh, you know, safety back. That's usually what how you're hoping this works. We'll watch how Geno Smith takes the snap. You're going to see him look over in that direction, but right here, he's actually going to do something different. He's going to throw the ball further down the field, which makes sense. I mean, the out route's just not open. Can't throw it there. So he's going to try and push it down the field instead. There is a safety there, though. So this is going to be a really difficult throw. You have to get it underneath the safety, past the corners. You know, there's a sideline you have to worry about as well. This is a difficult throw for Geno Smith to make. And as you see, he misses it. I mean, he throws it too high. It gets intercepted. So again, 100% you could easily look at that and say oh wow great play you know someone overthrew a football and you caught it like you know sure good job catching it but is it really that impressive well I say yes because this is the situation you're putting opposing quarterbacks in in the first place is you're forcing them to have to make difficult throws and Smith was not able to do it on that one. 
even stuff like this, which is becoming a, I don't know if this is a coaching thing, a luck thing or what. It might just be luck. I don't know. But I, I noticed it, so I'll bring it up. Uh, so, you know, on this play, what's going to happen is you see the concept on the bottom of the screen. It is man coverage here. And watch how when Geno Smith takes the snap right here, there, there's a window to make this throw 100%. Not a wide open window or anything like that, but there's, there's a window and you feel you know, good about potentially being able to make this happen. However, look at that player right there. That is Jadavian Clowney, who, you know, I think part of it is they got Jadavian Clowney, who is great at deflecting footballs. He's been great uh, throughout the course of his career with batted passes. And watch him get his hand up, and he knocks it away. And again, uh, corner would be having good closing speed, so maybe it wouldn't have even been complete. But like, if you're Geno Smith, you have to be thinking, man, what more can I do? We finally get a receiver open, and then I throw one, and it you know gets batted up by Clowney. Like you have that to worry about in the passing game on top of everything else. And then, of course, it can all come together in stuff like this. It's a red zone situation here for the Seahawks. They're playing man coverage, more of a traditional play, cover one, man blitz. So five players rush the passer, but you have five blockers, so you still have time. Someone has to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's almost kind of perfectly symmetrical on each side, right? For the offense, a receiver has to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. For the defense, a pass rusher has to win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. Okay, let's see what happens first. Well, you're going to see Smith takes the snap, and right away, no one's really winning their one-on-one -on -one matchup. I mean, there's not really a great throw to get you too many yards. Again, worth mentioning, this is a third down. They have to get two to four yard line. So a bit of a tough situation for Seattle, but definitely no one is really open. You could throw up a jump ball somewhere if you wanted, but that's kind of all you can do. That's what Smith does, and it gets batted away. Uh, so, again, this is just what Baltimore is doing to teams right now. And I feel like, you know, with all the attention Lamar Jackson is getting, and he deserves it. He's playing great football. There's no denying that. Uh, I do feel like we're kind of forgetting about the Ravens defense, which has been fantastic. It's been the second best defense according to e you know, EPA per play this season. Only Cleveland's is ahead of them. And, you know, I brought up there, there's been some weather things of Cleveland that have kind of inflated some numbers, although Cleveland's defense is obviously still really good. The Ravens haven't really had the luxury of that, and they've played some really good uh, offenses, right? They're not just playing a cupcake schedule. Uh, you know, you have Seattle, obviously, to have Detroit, uh, and they've been able to really shut them down. C.J. Stroud, who's having a great year, they held him to nine points. Uh, so, you know, they, they played some not great offenses as well this season, but when they've had challenges, they, you know, rose to the challenge and really looked great doing it. So, without a doubt, I think that this Ravens defense, it deserves a lot of credit. They have a lot of really good corners who can really play. You know, like Ronald Darby is having, you know, uh, he's had some good snaps for them. Uh, you know, Marlon Humphrey is obviously still Marlon Humphrey. The safety tandem of Geno Stone and Kyle Hamilton is, uh, you know, fantastic. They have had some injuries defensively, and they've still done a good job at being able to, you know, counter those. So as a whole, a lot to like about this team. So yeah, that's kind of how I view all of this. That's kind of what I view about this Ravens defense so far and why it makes them a legit contender to win the Super Bowl, which wouldn't be the first time the Ravens helped them win a Super Bowl. But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.